Hey! Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Nomadic Geek. In the first video of this series, we used the AZ Envy development board equipped with a gas sensor and humidity and temperature sensors to stream its readings and transmit them via WebSockets. In the second video, we set up a Node.js server to stream the sensor values to. In this video, we will construct a web client page that will display the value streamed through WebSockets in a graphical user interface within a web browser. In an upcoming video, we will use the ESP32CAM module to stream video through WebSockets to the Node.js server along with some sensor data of its own. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss it. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider liking the video as well. Let's get started. This is a root handler in a Node.js application using the Express.js framework. It sets up a root that listens for a get request to the slash client path and, when that request is received, sends the client.html file located in the public directory to the web client. We need to have client.html in the slash public directory because of this line where we are setting up a root that serves static files from this directory in the project folder when a request is made to the slash static root. Now it's time to create an HTML, CSS, and JS file. Right click in the project explorer and select new file. Name it client.html. You can also create a new file by clicking the new file button. Name this file client.css. Finally, create the file with the name client.js. In the client.html file, we are setting up our HTML with includes for a client-side JavaScript file and a client-side CSS file. The head element contains information about the web page, such as the title of the web page and links to other resources. The title element within the head element specifies the title of the web page, which is displayed in the browser's title bar or in the tab of the browser window. Then we have a script tag that includes the JavaScript file client.js we just created. The link element is a tag that includes the CSS file. CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, is a style sheet language used for describing the look and formatting of a document written in HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. CSS is used to control the style of a web page, including the layout, color, and font of the text, as well as other features such as backgrounds and borders. The body element contains the content of the web page that is visible to the user. Here we have a division element with an ID attribute of main wrapper, which is a container element that we will use to apply styles and perform other operations using JavaScript. Having completed the HTML file, it is now time to shift our focus to the client-side JavaScript file, designated as client.js. Within this file, we will be implementing the logic that will govern the behavior of the client side of our application. In this instance, we are utilizing the WebSocket constructor to establish a connection with a WebSocket server at the specified URL ws colon slash slash 92.168.0.150 on port 8999. To ensure that the connection is properly initialized, we have implemented an event listener for the open event, which is triggered upon the successful establishment of the connection. Upon the firing of this event, we utilize the send method to transmit a message to the WebSocket server, notifying it of the client's intention to connect. The server can then respond appropriately, and then performing some action in response to this notification. In the server.js file, we can see that the code puts a particular client into a list of clients. This enables the server to be updated upon any device transmitting data to the server. Returning to the client-side JavaScript file, designated as client.js, we include code that allows us to receive messages from the WebSocket server and take some action based on the data contained within the message. 
The data in question will be sensor data, transmitted by any connected sensor devices upon updates to their respective readings. The intention is to display a so-called card for each device connected to the WebSocket server, with each card showcasing the current sensor values for the respective device. This if statement states, if we cannot find the card already in the page, or DOM, document object model, we create the card with a set of DOM elements, such as division tags, image tag, and header tag. We want to have a helper function, create element, to make it easier to create elements than using JavaScript's own functionality, as it provides us a more tidy way of creating elements on the page. Here, we just need to specify that we want a division element with the specified attributes as the second argument to the create element function. Then, we create an h2 tag to add our heading to. And then the header text to that h2, which we have specified higher up in the code. Instead, we can make use of that third argument in the create element function we added. We can take the text and move it to the h2 creation, adding it as the third argument to the create element function. Remove the create text node command and the append child header. Also remove the dot length in the check below as this causes an error later on. Actually, we can create a helper.js file and put the create element function in it instead, claiming that it can be generalized and used in more web client pages later on by loading helper.js in the HTML file. Then, anyone who loads the file will have access to the function as if it existed on all pages. So, now we just have to include the helper file in the HTML file as well. Here, you can see that we are using static slash for the directory of the file. As you can see in the project explorer, this is not the actual name of the directory. This is due to the specific path that we specified in the server.js file to access the public files. Now back to our client.js file. Now, if the particular device has images, as our future device, the ESP32CAM module, will have, which we will introduce in the next tutorial video, we set the image source to that image. And, for each sensor data that this particular device has, we are also printing those values out afterwards. The only thing we have left now is the CSS styling. Click on the client.css file in the Project Explorer. Then, we just set up the generic normalizing CSS for the entire document, as well as the body tag for general styling purposes. Dot item is each sensor card on the page. The particular image size and its parent. The header text styling. The background for each item. The sensor's overlay needs to be positioned right. Sensor's generic styling. When you hover a value, it changes from white to black for contrast. The icon before the LPG value. The icon before carbon oxide value. The icon before smoke value. PPM or parts per million particles are the unit for smoke, carbon oxide, and LPG. The icon before temperature. The unit after temperature. The icon before humidity. Percentage sign after humidity. The icon before light photo sensor. And that concludes all our styling for the client.
Save all files and we will review the results to determine the efficacy of our efforts. Go to the terminal and run npm run start. Now open your favorite web browser and type localhost colon 8000 slash client in the address bar and hit enter. And there you have it. That's all for this episode of this tutorial series. In the next episode, we will take a look at what an ESP32 CAM module can do for us. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you again soon.